A quick and dirty half wavelength vertical antenna for six meters. The noise you hear in the background is me testing it on Whisper. Just using a fishing pole to support the wire. The wire is three meters long. I didn't measure it exactly, but that translates to half a wavelength on six meters. I'm using a single radial. Again, I didn't measure it precisely, but it's about a quarter wavelength long. The impedance here is high, therefore I've made a simple L match. I'm using a variable capacitor. It's the normal two gang transistor radio type, but I'm using the small half of it. That has a maximum of about 60 picofarad. Now, very importantly, I've set the trimmer so there's no overlap. There's two trimmers, even if you don't know which one is which, you set them both so that there's no overlap. That's minimum capacitance. The inductance here is around 0.3 or 0.4 microhenry. It's not that critical. I've just used a dowling for support. This is just thin, solid copper wire. It's plastic insulated, though if you've got enameled copper wire, that would be fine as well. A closer look at the coil. Eight turns spread over about 12 or 13 millimetres. And the timber dowling is about 9 millimetres in diameter. It's so simple, it's hardly worth drawing a circuit diagram. The braid from the transceiver coax goes to the centre pin of the variable capacitor. If there are three pins and that is also the connection for the counterpoise. One end of the inductor goes to the centre of the coax feed line. Nothing else is connected to it, as you can see from my thumb. And the other end of the coil goes to the variable capacitor. And that's the point where you can see from the yellow wire, that is the antenna. Three metres of wire, held vertical, by the squid pole. All you do is you apply RF and you adjust it for a peak in the received noise level when your receiver is on SSB. That should be near the clockwise direction of the variable capacitor where it's near minimum capacitance. I would estimate the capacitance is around 10 picofarad. This means that even if your variable capacitor doesn't go up to 60 picofarad it might be, for example, a 25 picofarad beehive trimmer, then that would be perfectly okay for this project. In fact, it might be slightly better. It may have less loss and be easier to adjust. This is a look at all stations active on 6 meters whisper at the time. There doesn't seem to be any particular enhancement. Looking at where I've been spotted, VK3DXE and VK3II. Looking at the SNR, VK3DXE is getting me about plus 9, plus 10, even plus 15. VK3II around minus 12. The latter about 50 kilometres distant. Now if we look at VK3II in a bit more detail as the reporter and compare it with VK3DXE, for me it's an average of around minus 10. I'm running 2 watts. In fact, that's misreported. I'm actually running 5 watts. And if we compare with VK3DXE, who's not far away, you can see the difference in the distance. I'm 51 kilometers. Alan is 47, so not much in it. And the output power from Alan is a bit more. 10 watts versus my 5. And the signal strength reports are very similar. Ever hear a term on the air that you don't understand the meaning of? That's where the Illustrated International Ham Radio Dictionary comes to the rescue. Over 1,500 definitions and 54,000 words, it's a comprehensive volume covering both technical and operating facets of amateur radio. For more information, visit my website vk3ye.com or look up Ham Radio Dictionary on Amazon.